On June 11th of 2014, four women and one man were indicted for illegally drugging men and charging thousands of dollars onto their credit cards in New York City strip clubs. Now I know you guys have seen the movie Hustlers. I am a huge fan of JLo and I really wanted to look in the true story that went behind this movie. One of the really interesting things that I found out is that Samantha Barbash, who was played by JLo, actually wasn't a stripper at all. But Samantha Barbash, along with her friend Rosie Keough, ended up hustling over $200,000 from men and targeted doctors, lawyers, bankers, while leading a small ring of exotic dancers and strip club workers in a four-month scheme. To provide a little bit of backstory, Rosie ended up dropping out of school at 17 to work at a diner. And this is really where she learned originally how to finesse for tips. But she was right next door to a strip club and managers from the strip club would come in and eat at the diner. Some would even suggest that she should come work for them, offering her a job. And realizing that she could be making a lot more, she ditched that waitressing job, not knowing what was going to happen next. This is part two to the Hustlers case. So Rosie ended up starting her job at a strip club and was making about two to three thousand dollars each night. Thankfully, for one of the first times in media, strippers were being actually shown in high positive regard. So it was inviting a lot more people into the strip clubs. And many of the Wall Street bros, after a hard day's work of scamming people, would come in and spend a lot of money. And at one point, Rosie was making about 10 grand a night from hedge fund managers. Literally because she was making her tuition in one night, she was like, school can be on the back burner. However, because of the type of men that were coming in, they had an overall mistrust for guys. In addition to this, men also ran the clubs. And a lot of the times they were getting really ridiculous working hours. And on top of this, which I did not know, you had to pay just to be able to work at certain clubs. So she was being charged about $300 just to come in and work. Everything was pretty much taxed, so you pretty much had to pay these managers additional money if you wanted them to send good clients your way. As Rosie states in her interview, all the girls collectively snapped. And then this is when the financial crisis of 2008 hit. Part three to the Hustlers case. So in 2008, the financial crisis hit and people were losing businesses, their homes. Wall Street completely crashed and trillions of dollars of wealth were gone overnight. So all this money going into the strip clubs were now disappearing. The girls were desperate and looking for another way to bring in the big bucks. Rosie had met Samantha back in 2007. She was a single mom from the Bronx and she was a recruiter for the club. So she would go out, find men and bring them back. And you would get a percentage of each dollar that this guy would spend at the club if you were the one that recruited him. While this process is legal, Samantha decided to have some other girls do this along with her, and it progressively got illegal. Rosie would go to very high-end bars, dressed in a blazer, befriend the men, acting like she's just one of them and got off of her job as well. She would keep an eye out for things like Rolexes or Black American Express cards, and sometimes the other girls would join as well. But they ended up drugging them with MDMA and ketamine, which is not at all like a typical roofie. It's way more dangerous. And they would charge up their cards to insanely high amounts. Part four to the Hustlers case. So this group of girls were really getting away with it because a lot of these guys had really high profile jobs or wives at home. So they would wake up the next day with this massive bill. They didn't want people to find out because it was at a strip club. So they would just pay it and move on. And sometimes whenever these guys were out there and the banks would flag it, the girls would actually pick up the phone pretending to be their assistant and confirm that the charges were legit. Samantha ended up setting her eyes on another victim, Dr. Yunin, who was a young cardiac surgeon from New Jersey. He was single, never married, and they really thought that he was the perfect target. They set him up on a date with another girl named Karina, who was obviously a part of this scheme, and they went on three dates total. The first two dates, he would wake up in the morning feeling kind of fuzzy, not really remembering, but he thought that he just overdrank. But by the third date, he actually woke up with a call from American Express, stating that there was a hundred grand in charges to his credit card at Robert's Steakhouse, which was a steakhouse at Scores, the strip club. Absolutely pissed, he called Karina and went off, and then he decided to take legal action. to the hustlers case so after american express ends up looking at the receipts and seeing that they're forged amex refuses to pay scores so scores then sues dr unit and then he countersues he states that he's never even been to this strip club 
And that's when Scores ends up releasing CCTV footage of him being there, but obviously he was drugged, so he doesn't remember. But the tabloids exploded. They were painting the picture that he just kind of spent too much money being drunk one night. So he went straight to the police, who had actually been aware of the scam for some time. But they needed a solid tip in order to put up a sting. So they end up sending in an agent to pose as a rich guy. And if you go to my Instagram Reels tab, there's a video over there that goes into detail on this sting operation. But ultimately, they were able to get enough evidence off of this to where they could take it to court and actually have the girls arrested. And it wasn't long till the girls started to make plea deals. Rosie was the first one to cooperate and she settled for five years of probation. Karina ended up serving 16 weeks at Rikers Island along with five years probation. I want to know what y'all's thoughts are on this case and go to my Insta if you want to see the extra video. Story time about how my boyfriend gave me sleeping pills before his boys night out. I had been dating my boyfriend for a year and we always had a pretty trusting relationship. One weekend, he was going to have a boys night out with his friends and I was going to stay home. However, earlier in the day, we had gone into an argument about how he never checks his phone while he's out or replies to my text to check in. He said he shouldn't have to check in with me while he's out and I disagreed because I just want to make sure that he's okay. Fast forward to later that night when he's getting ready, I told him that even though we're fighting, I still expect him to keep in touch with me. He agrees this time without putting up a fight and asks me if I want to have a drink with him before he goes. He makes us some cocktails and we drink them together while while we wait for his friends to come pick him up. When his friends get there, he kisses me goodbye and leaves. Not even half an hour later, I'm knocked out cold. I remember waking up once just for a second to use the bathroom, but then knocking out again. In the morning when I woke up, he was asleep next to me and I was really confused as to why I slept so much when I wasn't even tired. When my boyfriend woke up, he mentioned how nice it was that I hadn't messaged him and how I must have slept through the night after those cocktails. This raised some red flags and I quickly questioned him about what was in the cocktails. At first, he called me crazy and told me that he didn't do anything to them. However, after about 20 minutes of accusing him, he finally confessed. Part 2. My boyfriend gave me sleeping pills before his boys not out. After I accused my boyfriend of messing with the cocktails, he admitted to putting a couple Benadryl in my drink. This, mixed with the alcohol, is what made me extremely sleepy and caused me to knock out for the whole night. I was furious when he said it. He clearly didn't see a problem with it and even made a joke about how he should do it more often when he doesn't want me pestering him. I freaked out at him and told him that what he did was not only wrong, but could also be a crime. I think this scared him a bit because he quickly started apologizing and promising to never do it again. Obviously, I'm not stupid and I wasn't going to stay with someone who would do that to me. I quickly called my family who came rushing over. I packed my things and my brothers kept my now ex in the other room and threatening him not to come around me. I got all my things together with my mom and my sister and left him that very day. He wouldn't stop blowing up my phone with apologies and sending sorry gifts to my work. I had to block his number and threaten him with a restraining order if he ever tried to talk to me again. I was horrified that someone would go to those lengths and I couldn't trust him after this. He even tried to get his family to text me to get back together with him, but when I told them why we broke up, they were shocked too. They apologized profusely on his behalf and told me to stay safe.